Hi everyone, we're just going to start now. I think um, we've got about 10 of you um, on board. So welcome everyone. Um, I'm Nicola Morgan with Arkina. And I'm Chris with Arkina. And I'm Clemmie with Arkina. Um, just a reminder before we get started, we're, we are recording uh, this video so you can download it and refer to it later. Um, Clemmie, would you like to start? Yes, thanks Nicola and welcome everyone. So it's nice to have you all back for the, uh, the second session. I'm glad we didn't scare you off in the first session. Um, so this first one here, what, I'll just quickly run through what we're going to cover um, and then we can um, get into it. So a few housekeeping things first. If you could please put yourself on mute when you're not speaking. We've got a lot, on, lot of people on the line so we want to make sure everyone can hear um, what I'm saying and hear each other if we're asking questions. Um, if you could select gallery view in the top right hand corner, then you can see everyone's faces. Also feel free to type questions into the chat function at the bottom of the screen and Nicola um, will let me know because I can't see them because I'm on full screen. But Nicola, if there are questions, please let me know. Um, and also please note that as Nicola said, the call is being recorded. As we go through though, I do encourage you to ask questions. So. Um, don't keep yourself on mute if there's something you would like to say. Feel free to ask a question or to write a question in the, in the box if that's easier. So today what we'll cover, we'll first um, talk about what it means to be working towards the right thing. We'll talk about some definitions. Um, we'll do an introduction to impact management and um, why, why it's a good thing and what the benefits of it are. Um, and then we'll talk about what the homework is for this session and some uh, invite any other questions that you might have. We'll also cover off some key dates. So at the end of this session, you should be able to understand the purpose and benefits of measuring impact and be in a position where you can tell others, tell social enterprises about the purposes and benefits of measuring impact. That'll include the benefits of refining the organization's focus proving impact to funders, engaging participants, ensuring that impact is being achieved by the organisation and improving how the organisation operates. I, I invite you all to please ask a question if you don't understand something that I'm saying as well. I'm conscious that in this area of work, there are a lot of words that are jargon or carry meaning that other people don't understand. Um, so. I'll try to not use those words without a definition, but if I, if I get it wrong and forget, please challenge me and ask the question. Okay, so we're into it. So we think that there are two important things, actually there are lots of important things, but two important things that a social enterprise needs in order to achieve sustainable impact. The first one is a business plan, which we're all familiar with. A, a business plan um, helps create financial sustainability and can continue so that the organisation can continue to create impact. But just important as a business plan, we think it's really important that a social enterprise has an impact plan or an impact strategy. The impact plan helps an organisation to refine its focus and identify what impact it wants to have. It can have a number of components to it, it can, and we'll talk about those over the course of this session um, and actually the whole program, but they might include a theory of change, which is a, a term we'll go into later, um, methods to track whether you are being successful in creating the impact that you want to have, and a plan to learn and adapt as you go along. So these two things combined, the business plan and the impact plan, uh, working together and alongside each other we think leads to sustainable impact for the organisation. So first question is, um, as social enterprise should ask, when they're starting or um, it, even for, for organisations that have been running for some time and are feeling unclear on what direction they want to take or are not having the growth that they want to have, a very important question to ask is, are you working towards the right thing? So what are you working towards and would it be a good thing if you achieved that? It sounds like a simple question to ask, but it's the, the fundamental reason that social enterprises exist and often many of them haven't asked that question. So what do I mean by that? It, 
a lot of social enterprises um, might have established, established themselves to run a particular activity and that activity seems like a good thing to do but they don't have clarity around what the ultimate impact is that they're trying to achieve. They might um, have a number of things that they're hoping it will achieve but they haven't refined their focus onto one. Or they might have assumed that they know what the thing is that they should be trying to change without talking to the people that are affected by the problem. So for example, um, they might be trying to address homelessness and trying to support people who are ex experiencing homelessness, but they haven't spoken to people who are experiencing homelessness. So here you see the, the old, um, there's, there's often a, um, a story about a soup kitchen, for example, where um, people are um, providing food to people who are homeless uh, which is great and people who are homeless might need that that support but when they spoke to the people who are homeless the the thing that they really wanted wasn't more soup it was that they wanted change um, and so what does that look like and how can you explore with that person um, what change looks like for them is it um, support into employment or is it housing it might not be housing because that could kind of further socially isolate a person because they're currently existing within a community and to put them in a home might remove them from that support network that they've got. So what is the ultimate impact that you're working towards and would it be a good thing if you achieve that for the people who, who you're hoping to um, benefit? So once you're comfortable that you're working towards the right thing, the next question a social enterprise should ask is, do you have the right approach to, to working towards that right thing? So say, for example, the good thing, the, the good result that we were working towards, um, say it was young people being set up for success in their lives. Um, we might say that a good approach to that is education. Um, and for a long time, schools have put children in a classroom from the age of five till 18, sitting at a desk with a teacher. A, around a lot of the world, that's the way that we educate. But, and that's great if our goal is for children to be able to read and write um, and some of the other great outcomes that schools achieve. But if we start to say, well, the outcome that we want, the, the good thing that we want is for um, young people to be set up for success in their lives, we might start to challenge some of those methods of teaching and say, is there something else we could be doing in a different way to maximize our impact? Or we might say, well, actually, let's look at what the evidence is saying about um, what leads to young people being set up for success. And we might see that the evidence is saying that the first thousand days of life are the most important. So from um, conception through into, until um, the, around two years old, what could we be doing with, um, with babies to support um, them to be cognitively developing and arriving at school ready to learn so that they can um, then benefit from their schooling. So you've got your good approach and you've got your good result. You're, you're, you're comfortable, you've asked the questions, you've spoken to the people that matter um, to feel comfortable with those two things. The next important thing is to check that there's a logical link between the two. So here we've got a picture of a basketball player. So the basketball player has a basketball in the, in the hand and they intend to shoot it into the hoop. There is a theory that says that that ball will follow a parabolic curve. It might not always reach it into the hoop because the basketball player might have too much force or the distance between the player and the hoop might be too great or, or too close. Um, but there is a logic that suggests the curve that it will follow. And that's why millions of people around the world enjoy playing basketball and shoot the ball into the hoop and, and often get it in because of that theory. And they continue to test the, the theory and refine it and work on it. We like this analogy because it's, um, we, we think that it's really beneficial for a social enterprise to have their good approach, but make sure that they've got a theory of how it will lead to the good, good result that they want to have. It might not always get there. There might be other factors that influence it, like it might be a different environmental condition or it might work for some people, but not for others. And those are things that they can test and learn from over time to know what, what the theory is and how they can refine it. But the most important thing is for a social enterprise to get clear on what their activity is, what their good approach is, 
be sure that they know what they're aiming for, what the goal is, and be and have a clear logic that links their activity to their ultimate goal. Are there any questions or thoughts or comments on any of that? Nicola, I saw a comment pop up. Are we fine? So that was just me encouraging them to ask questions if they have any and to remind them these slides are available on Slack um, if they, to save them copying it all down. Great, thanks. Okay, so another important thing to start with is um, for organisations to start to get their thinking away from focused on, on activities and towards outcomes or impact. So for a long time, funders have funded activities, governments around the world fund a school. I keep picking on schools, I do like schools, but I'm just using that as an example. But for a long time, governments have focused on funding an activity and big philanthropic foundations and other funders do the same thing. Now they're switching their focus, as most of you know, um, to focusing on the change that, uh, that we want to see. But a lot of organisations actually need support in making that, that flip. So it um, is helpful to support the organisation to identify what their activity is and then help them to see what, to, to switch their thinking to focusing on what changes because of that activity. So here we've got the examples of running skills training is the activity, but the outcome we want to see is that people get long-term jobs. The activity might be giving people food, but the outcome we want to see is that communities are more resilient. So these few slides that I've run through are the basic um, premise of a, a focus on impact and the fundamental components of what we'll talk about later, which is a theory of change. I'm sure this is familiar to a lot of you, but um, we find it a useful way to teach social enterprises to, as a, warm, a, a soft introduction to some of these concepts to kind of talk about those three elements and then support them to start to identify what changes because of their activities. So now I would like to talk about some definitions. I, I mentioned before that unhelpfully there are a lot of different terms used to describe different things in this space. I would like to hear from all of you if there are some words that you are unsure about. Um, I'll list some words that to me seem to kind of fall in the same bucket and I'm interested in any other words that you've got that fall in those same buckets so that we can um, start to build out to check that our thinking's all aligned on what we mean by different words. So for example, the word impact, we uh, use that word to describe the positive social or environmental change that happens as a consequence of an activity or an intervention or, or something that's happening. Another word that often is used is outcome. So we, we sometimes will use those words interchangeably, impact, outcome, and positive social or environmental change. It, it's unhelpful that there are so many words, but we try and use all of those words to reflect that um, there are lots of different sectors using various words in that space. Are there any other words that you commonly see used in place of outcomes or impact or positive social or environmental change? No. Okay, I'll try another one. Um, the, another grouping that we see is theory of change that sometimes is called logic model, program logic, and intervention logic. Are there any other words that you see used to describe the, the framework or the hypoth hypothesis that's similar to what I was just talking about, that link between the activity and the impact and the logic that links the two? Nicola, have you got any words that you've seen? Actually, one of our participants has asked, what about output? Good question. So um, outputs, output is a, a term that we often see used to describe the thing that immediately happens as a consequence of an activity or an intervention. And generally it's something that you can count quite quickly and it's things that were often put in reports. So for example, the school example again, I'm running a school, the output would be the number of students that attend the school. It doesn't talk about anything that's changed for those students, it's a count of how many have come along. Running a doctor's surgery, it's the number of patients. 
the change that we would want to see is that um, the patients are treated and are well and, are, and remain healthy. The change for the school, they're, they're running a school, the output is that they've got this number of students attending, this is their attendance rates, but the outcome is that children learn to read and write, children are happy and um, set up for success in their lives. Does that dis is that distinction clear enough? Okay, another um, kind of grouping of language that I sometimes see is outcomes measurement, measurement, evaluation and learning, or MEL, impact management, impact measurement, social accounting, social audit, social return. It's a lot of words. <laughs> Nicola, anything you want to add to that list? Or anyone else? Okay, so this isn't the only time that we're going to talk about words. We've got in the handout later some definitions fleshed out um, so that you can refer back to them. Um, but just so you know, if, if you're finding it difficult to understand some of the terminology, you're not alone because all around the world people use different words. Okay, so I'm just going to paint the big picture um, so that you know how things are fitting together. So we mentioned before that it's really important for a social enterprise to have an impact strategy, a clear plan for how what they're doing is going to lead to positive change. So that's the first part there, they've got the strategy. The next, next part in the, this ongoing cycle is that they start measuring. So that's what we're talking about in this um, the series we're, we're talking about getting that clear strategy and learning how to measure it but we think it's also really important that you think of this as a cycle that involves management so the reason that you have a strategy the reason that you're measuring what you're doing is so that you can manage the social enterprise better in order to achieve that impact that's included in the strategy so an impact management framework might include a theory of change, which is a, a hypothesis of how what you're doing leads to the positive change that you want to see. A theory of change is then got sitting underneath it some indicators, which is the way that you can do that measurement. So it's clues that things are happening. Um, and those, those indicators um, tell you what data to collect to measure what's happening. And so the final part is the data collection methods. So those data collection methods might include surveys or observations or a count of, of um, how many people are visiting your website. So those three things combined support you to do the measurement component of the, that um, cycle of the strategy, the measurement and the management. There's a lot in here, but we'll step through it more slowly. We're not saying that we've shown you one slide, so now you will know how to do it. <laughs> we'll have a whole session on the theory of change and we'll have a session on the indicators and how you can um, define what you should measure and how you can go about measuring those things. So now we want to, we'll actually spend most of this session today um, diving into what you can do, why impact management or measuring what you're doing is useful and um, how it benefits social enterprises. We're hoping that by taking you through it slowly, um, you'll be in a position to explain the benefits to social enterprises so that they kind of know why they, would, why they should be interested in this. Because we acknowledge that social enterprises are often under-resourced, out of time, um, and adding an extra thing on can seem daunting. And um, if there's no clear value proposition, it's hard for social enterprises to justify the time and effort it takes to do this stuff. Um, they might be enthusiastic to learn about it, but actually embedding it in the organisation can be a, a big job. And so it's useful, we find, to start by um, getting really clear on the potential benefits. So first of all, and importantly, the um, measuring or understanding your impact better is important for planning. We we sort of think of this whole piece of work, this whole area as something that you can pick and choose what's relevant for the organisation. And for a lot of early stage social enterprises, if all we do with them is help them on the planning side of things, 
that can still be really beneficial to setting them up better to achieve greater impact. So what I mean by planning is often social enterprises will come to us and they'll be trying to do everything or they'll be focused really on early on on the activity and not have clarity on where they're trying to get to. They won't kind of know who to partner with. Um, that, so, sorry, is that a question? No. Um, so supporting a social enterprise to make that switch from the activities to the outcomes and then start to identify what outcomes they're trying to have and then refining those outcomes in for what seems sensible together, you can work on that and, and you can play the role of the, um, the external facilitator, the critical friend, the person who's looking at it objectively and, and isn't emotionally connected to any one of the, the outcomes or impact areas that they're committed to. You can play a role of helping them to refine their focus. So I'm going to step through each of these ones, ones in turn. I've just forgotten that I've actually got a slide for each one. But this is an overview of all the ones we'll look at. So planning, it can help you deliver, to partner better. We've spoken about measurement. Measurement's helpful, obviously, for you to prove what you're doing. But even more important, I think, to uh, be able to improve what you're doing. And ultimately, you can then communicate that impact to your stakeholders, whether that's your funders, your, con your consumers, if you're a social enterprise selling products um, or services, um, and importantly, your um, most important stakeholders, I think, is the um, people you're seeking to benefit. So planning, know where, you want, know where you want to get to and have a plan to get there. So this is um, what I was talking about with the benefit of um, helping a social enterprise to refine their focus. This is the, the fundamental part of the strategy, the mo most important core bit, and it's, um, you can develop this through the theory of change process, which is what our whole next session is about. Um, so it helps you get clear on the change you're trying to make in the world, working with your business plan, uh, um, and this part works well with your business plan. It um, helps to, with your business plan, help you set goals. So over on the delivery, we also think it's really exciting when measurement and evaluation and understanding what you're doing um, supports a social enterprise to deliver better. So, for example, we see that, um, I'll give a couple of examples of organisations, they might not be social enterprises, but I'll give the example of an organisation that would find it very difficult to gather information. So. It, the example is a, a women's refuge, a shelter for women who are experiencing violence. Um, and the shelter found it very hard to gather data on how effective they were being because they couldn't contact the women after the women had left the shelter because it was really sensitive. They couldn't call them up at their home because then the people in the house would know that they'd been to the shelter, for example. So they had no idea how to gather data. Um, and then they changed their approach. So when women came to visit the organization they would say um, welcome um, we're pleased you've come to see us we're just letting you know that this is our process we invite everyone who comes to see us to come back for a cup of tea in six months time after you leave the service and in saying that the the women felt like they had a touch point six months later so they measured what benefit the women had as, as soon as they left the center and, and they had a lot of benefit because while they were there, they'd had wraparound support and counseling and, and um, a lot of pastoral care while they were there. And so upon leaving the service, they had a lot of impact, um, they'd had a lot of value that they were feeling. Um, they then, the, they then um, found that that value dropped off over time. So um, after six months, obviously they weren't feeling as supported because they hadn't seen them for six months. But the, the women who came back, who knew that they could come back for a cup of tea, they found that the value that that woman experienced stayed quite high because they knew that they had another opportunity to go and talk to someone who cared about them in six months time. So for the whole of that six months period, they'd felt slightly supported, even though they hadn't been in the center. So it was really great that they could um, improve their offering, have the women feel more supported, and have that opportunity to collect data. 
Other organisations who do this really well is where they um, build the measurement into the program as a goal setting approach. So a lot of social enterprises work quite closely alongside people who are experiencing hardship. Um, and in order to make sure that they're really um, helping in increasing self-determination of those people, they will um, start the program with a goal setting session. So the people who are experiencing the hardship can say, look, this is what I want to get out of my relationship with you, with, with my engagement with you. Um, and the facilitator or the program worker can say, that's great, this is something that we can work with you on. And then every time they had a session, they would check in to see how the person was going against their goals. That was a data collection opportunity for the organisation, but importantly, it was a way that the person experiencing hardship could kind of hold the organisation accountable and make them um, feel some ownership in achieving the impact that they achieve at the end of it. So they've got a real, um, it's a really interesting way of making sure that the person experiencing the hardship is an agent of change in what the organisation is doing. So partnering, this is a really important one, we think. Um, they're all important. I keep saying that a lot, probably because there's a lot of stuff that's important in this. So we, we think of partnering in multiple dimensions. Um, first, on the goals, we, we think it's great to talk to the people who are experiencing the hardship to check what the goals should be. That's an op opportunity to partner with those people in a really authentic way. So what a, a good question to ask social enterprises is, what processes have you gone through to understand those people's goals? What do they say they want? What are their dreams, hopes, aspirations? And have you actually considered that those people might have the answers um, and that they might have the resources to solve the problem with your support? How involved are you, how involved in the decision making are you letting those people be? Are you just consulting them or are you truly involving them in the decision making process? And how will you check back in with them that you're meeting the expectations? On the partners one, so the part, we, we think of other partners as being a bit broader, so um, that might in, include government if they're funding the program or another funder. It might also include um, consumers of your product. Um, so they might be, those other people might be a source of data. They could be a critical part in creating the impact or, or a funder. So there's a trend amongst governments for moving to outcomes-based contracts. Um, and in the past, those organisations were paid for the activities and now the governments are seeing less interest in those activities and they actually want to see the outcomes. So in taking this new approach, you might find that the government is um, actually much more interested in being a partner and sharing data. It's a little bit of a slow journey for a lot of governments to get there. It might be that you find a warmed up funder or an innovative department within a government. Um, but yeah, don't, we, we're um, excited about the New Zealand government's progress in this space, but we recognise that even they've got a long way to go. And so uh, we expect it's similar in your countries that governments are interested in talking about outcomes to varying levels, but um, they're not all there yet and it's a, it's a big beast to move government. So the final one here on the partnering is the community, the stakeholders. So it's important that you see the community that you're serving as a key partner in change. You're not doing something to people, you're doing something with them. Any questions or thoughts or comments as I keep going? I'm just going to run through what we call the partnering spectrum. So I've, I've addressed some of these thoughts as, as I've gone along. Part of it is about um, informing people um, and, and more you not informing people, but people informing you. So you gathering the insights that you need to design your approach to addressing a problem. Um, then there's the consult or engage phase making sure that you're involving people on the whole journey and then collaborating with people to actually deliver and seeing people as agents of change and partners in delivery. And that leads you to empowering people to 
be agents of change. Nicola, did you have a thought or a comment? You've popped up on my screen. Okay, any, any comments from anyone else? No. Okay. So we, we touched on a th what a theory of change is um, and the theory of change being this hypothesis of how what you're doing is leading to the positive change that you want to see. That forms the, the foundation of your program logic. You can then use that foundation to come up with the things that you want to measure. So a really important and useful thing for getting a clear understanding of what change you're having is that you can then measure that change. Once you've got the clarity, you can start to measure it. So your theory of change shows you what to measure. And sometimes you have to me measure um, things that are different from what you've explicitly said. So it's a proxy, it's a guess that change is happening. And we'll talk about that in a later session. Um, we call these indicators or proxies um, that you can use to measure. Nicola, is that a question? Just lots of little orange, orange things popping up on the top of my screen. <laughs> um, also an interesting and exciting thing about being able to measure what you're doing is it gives you an opportunity to align with existing frameworks. So I think we'll talk about this later as well in a bit more detail, but the SDGs, which you're, you're probably all familiar with, the Sustainable Development Goals, and then other frameworks. We, we've got a lot of them in our country. I'm sure you've all got lots of frameworks in your countries as well. But generally we see that social enterprises are focused on their activity. Some of them may have made the switch from focusing on, a, on an activity to an outcome. But generally when they've done that, the focus on the outcome is a short-term outcome. So it might be um, we run a social enterprise that employs people with a disability so that people with a disability um, can have purpose and meaning and gain employment. There's a lot of things that happen immediately after doing that work. The first change that might happen is that um, the people with a disability feel connected to the people that they're working around and they develop strong relationships. That change, the, the feeling, the connection and the strong relationships isn't something that's represented in the sustainable development goals. And so they're gonna need this theory of change to stretch out beyond the immediate things that they see all the way through to the sustainable development goals if they're going to want to be able to communicate with stakeholders that are really interested in the sustainable development goals. So that goal might be um, around the education. And so they want to say, look, the first thing we see is strengthened relationships. And then this happens and then this happens and then we get to employment. Hopefully that makes, makes sense. It should be, this is, we're trying to be jargon free and make it as um, obvious as possible. Prove, this is often the thing that social enterprises first think that they want. Um, before we uh, talk to them and, and talk about the real value of planning and improving. But proving is, um, to social enterprises can be really important as well. So the value of proving what you're doing uh, is huge. We're working with one social enterprise who uh, has a fantastic program. She um, trains young people to gain hospitality skills so that they can then get employment opportunities. Uh, the, the obvious thing she's doing is getting them employment opportunities, but they've also got great other outcomes happening. For example, a uh, significant number of the students that work with her have improved housing as a consequence of gaining that employment. They have improved mental health because they enjoy going to work and they have financial sustainability. They're also less reliant on government welfare benefits. Until she's able to report that full impact, the only thing she can talk about is the employment. Unfortunately, she's missed out on some grants and um, funding opportunities because she's supporting people to gain employment in an industry that um, is not 
some funders think is not worthy of funding because they, they think that it's a low paid job. So if she had been in a position to give them the evidence to show that she's improving housing outcomes and financial sustainability and well-being outcomes, um, then she would have been much more likely to receive that funding. So your measurement can be used to prove that what you're doing is having the impact that you intend it to have, which can be good for um, stakeholders, but also for yourself. So we think that social enterprises um, are like any business and accept that businesses can measure themselves by how much their balance sheet is changing. So if they're making profit, they know they're doing well. It's much harder for social enterprises, obviously. So gathering the data, having the clarity of what change they're trying to see, and then gathering data to know whether that's happening or not, can help them know whether what they're doing is working. That can help them refine their focus as well, so they can, they can spend more time on the things that are working. So proof can be hard to achieve, but sometimes the best you can do is have a credible logic and then measurement and evaluation and research on the early things. So I talked before about how often a social enterprise knows what activity it's doing. Sometimes it knows about, it can see the short term change, but it doesn't go much beyond that. If it starts, if it develops a clear model that says we're doing this activity, which leads to this change, and it's pretty obvious that that change would lead to this change, and it's pretty obvious that that change would lead to this change, and hey, actually we've got research internationally that shows that this change leads to that change, then that's a really compelling logic. It doesn't matter then that the social enterprise can only gather data on the early stage things, because that early stage data combined with the compelling logic can give stakeholders confidence that they're on track to achieve the long-term impact. Does that make sense? I imagine a lot of nods happening in different parts of the world. Or at least I'm hoping that's what's happening. Oh, sorry, we've got a slide that's gone a bit, a bit weird. I'll just have to tell you what I'm talking about here. So um, a tricky thing on the proving part, which I'm, I'm sure lots of you know about, is how you prove attribution versus contribution. So what part of it was you and what part of it was someone else? Especially this is hard when we're told that a really good way to work is to work collaboratively and to work towards collective impact and for organisations to all work together to achieve great change. Um, that's really hard to work alongside a lot of organisations to achieve the change because then you don't know what part of it was you and what part of it was someone else. So um, we'll also talk about how you can overcome some of those challenges in the later session. Uh, but if you are working collectively, then we say that this, this measurement stuff is even more important and it's important that you start it off early. So um, some of you will be familiar with the collective impact framework uh, which suggests that you have shared measurement. So you agree early on that, that you will measure the same things so that you've sort of um, addressed that challenge of contribution and attribution right from the start before you start doing the work, or at least early on in your partnership. And improve, this is my favorite one. I know we're not supposed to have favourites, but I've got a favourite and this is it. So I think that it's really valuable for social enterprises to get clear on what they are trying to achieve so that they can improve what they're doing. Social enterprises can do this even if they're not gathering data. So just having greater clarity on what they're working towards means they're more likely to work towards it, work towards that one thing rather than getting distracted by all of the other asks that they're having. Um, just last night I was working with a, um, a group of young guys who are really embedded in the community and um, so they get asked a lot by the community to help out in different ways. They, um, they teach young people their trade so that um, they're inspiring the young people around them. If there's a, a death in the community they'll provide their services for free to that family so that they can relieve some of the burden. Um, they 
and, and they provide the services that they offer at a really cheap rate so that they can, um, because they don't want to be charging too much to the people because they're all people that they know, they're in their community. And so we had to work with them to say, well, what impact are you really trying to have? And it was this community strengthening bit that was important to them. They've, we helped them to see that their really low price point wasn't actually necessary for that community strengthening bit. What was important was that they became sustainable and they've stayed in that organisation as a, a kind of a, a central point for the young people to come and visit and for the to be able to grow so that they had that capacity to give free services and to do the really cool um, work that they were doing, which was around um, creating branding and imaging that, that was really had a local context to it and, and helped to strengthen identity in that community. Their community was um, offering to pay. They, they were meeting the price point and actually the price point wasn't a problem most of the time and when it was people would come in and ask for things for free and they could they could assess whether they wanted to do that or not but by helping them to see what the main goal was they could stop they could start saying no to some of the things that were holding them back from becoming sustainable um, which hopefully will lead to them being more sustainable and achieving that impact that they want to have they could do that without even measuring anything so if we think often this stuff is seen as too hard and that the organisation doesn't have the resources to be able to measure what they're doing and so they just don't do it. But I think as a facilitator, as an independent intermediary, whatever role you've got, you're, you're in a strong position to play the role of that critical friend and help facilitate a process where the social enterprise can tell you all of the things that you're doing and you can help refine the process using this, this methodology that we'll work through in the next few sessions to help them focus on the things that really matter and see that positive change. It's even better if they're able to start measuring what they're doing because then they can check whether it's working or not. And as I said on the last slide, they can focus their efforts on the things that have the greatest impact. So these guys last night, for example, um, they with some poking and prodding and um, thinking about the data that they've got, um, they realized that the most valuable thing to people was the, the branding and the identity um, part of the work, not the producing that into a repl replicable item. That could be done cheaply elsewhere. It was the really cool brand branding essentially that was coming out of the, the culture of this place. Um, and so then they could, they could say, okay, well, that's what will focus our efforts on training more people in so that they can do more of that work um, because that's really valuable to this community. And they can make a deliberate choice around that because they, had, they were armed with information. And finally, um, social enterprises are able to communicate better. So the, um, the proving, the improving, the gathering the data, um, even just the planning and having a, a, having greater clarity around the change that they're trying to see. Um, we think that that puts social enterprises in a better position to be able to tell their impact story. That's important for all of the stakeholders I mentioned before. So this, the, the funders, the consumers, the um, people who are seeking to benefit. It, it often is a point of difference and we're seeing a lot of social enterprises in New Zealand who are doing this well are really going ahead. Um, and a lot of lot others are asking for it because they um, see the value to the ones that are doing it well. But importantly, make sure you can back it up. Uh, we've heard organisations say it can be your sword and your shield. It can help you cut through and get the, the real benefit and get funding. Um, and it can also help to protect you when you get criticism. So if, if you're criticised for not doing enough um, not doing enough in the community, then a clear impact strategy is something you can point to and say, no, look, this is our plan, this is what we're doing. Um, we don't expect to see huge change for a few years because this stuff takes a long time and we're working on developing relationships early on, for example, um, and, and then we think those relationships will lead to this change, which will lead to this change. So make sure you can back it up. So I'm just going to go back to that summary page with all of those parts. Um, I welcome 
comments on what you think social enterprises find useful, why, they, why you're interested in learning about this stuff. Hopefully someone wants to comment. Perhaps I can call on you, Nicola, as a first one to comment. What do you think is useful about impact and having a focus on impact? I think all of those things are really, really useful, um, to be honest. And I was just thinking about my own journey with different organisations. And I, I think um, my own experience has been um, probably weakest in communicating. Sometimes I think one can get carried away at looking internally and trying to get all those other parts right. Um, but I've seen, like you said, especially more and more in New Zealand, um, enterprises getting really good at telling their story and all the positive impact that it has for them when they do that and do that well and they can actually, they have the data and they have the theory of change to back up what they're saying. Um, so, yeah, all of these things, but that's probably the one I, the, the take home message I have the most. Yeah, and I, I'll, I'll jump in in lieu of others, but we do have one comment from, from Rita in the chat. Um, but first of all, I just wanted to say, Clem, thanks very much. I think this is a really thorough um, uh, kind of analysis of the different rationales, right, and the, the values for, for doing impact measurement well in ventures. But um, the uh, only other thing that I'd add is, I think there are more and more people seeking out employers that are doing impactful work and looking for proof points from those employers about the impact of their work as well. So I'd argue that actually there's a recruitment and retention value um, of measuring your impact and managing your impact well that, uh, that we might want to include as well. But um, there's, uh, there's a comment here from Rita saying that uh, storytelling is very important for pitching to financiers. So giving a holistic impact is important though it is difficult. Great, thanks. Well, yes, great add in there, the, um, the recruitment that and maintaining staff. Um, because generally the people that work at social enterprises are underpaid, but they're there because they're passionate about it. And so they're more likely to stay engaged if they can see that the thing they're passionate about is actually happening. Um, so that's a great one. And Rita, to add on to what you're saying, yes, we're seeing a lot in New Zealand, particularly in the impact investing space, that um, the investors, the funders, um, are demanding that social enterprises report on their impact and get quite pointy on it, get really specific on a couple of things that they're counting and have the financing be contingent on that. So it, it is very difficult sometimes, particularly to um, provide that level of certainty to a funder. Um, and that's why we're all here, right? To learn how to do it better. And, what we hope to do is be able to address things at both ends of the spectrum. So at the, the light touch end of the spectrum so that social enterprises who are under-resourced can do it easily and measure a few things that will um, give them the information they need to make decisions, but also be able to communicate better, but also how to get really pointy and measure things that are um, able to be shared with funders who want that extra level of rigor and specificity. Great, thank you. Anyone else with comments? I'm kind of excited that we just got three other people talking just then. <laughs> cool. Okay, so in the next session, um, we're going to step through the theory of change in a lot of detail so that we can really get you comfortable with what the theory of change is, is that the base important part of a theory of change. So once you've got the skills and knowledge to be able to develop a theory of change, um, that's, the, that's the plan uh, for the theory of, for um, then moving on to measurement. And from that plan, we'll have a following session of how to identify indicators and measures that you can then start collecting data against. So talking about the next sessions, um, between now and the next session, um, we have some homework. And I just need to skip ahead a few slides. Um, and Nicola, do you want to jump in and describe the homework? And I might um, interject with any other probably not as useful comments. 
Right. Right, so thank you everyone. Um, I see we have 15 participants on the line. Um, and for those of you making co positive comments about what a good job Clem is doing, thanks for the feedback. Um, I'm not sure if you've all had a chance to go onto the Slack channel and download these three documents. Um, there's the slides Clemmy's just used. Um, there are handout slides and the handout slides actually have some of the definitions written down in a bit more detail in them for you. And there's also an assignment um, handout. Um, and you'll see on the assignment handout, and I'll open that for you in a moment, it's due on um, the 24th, uh, the 22nd of March, but on this slide it says the 24th for those people who like to work over the weekend. But the idea is that Clemmy and I will have a chance to look at your answers between the 25th and the 28th, because on the 28th of March we have the seminar, which is when we come together and discuss as a group how their uh, homework assignment went and things we learned and any questions we might have had coming out of that. So come to the seminar ready to, to talk. Um, we say on the slide, find an assignment partner. That's optional, but um, if you want to work in twos or possibly even threes, we certainly welcome that. Um, this is not a assignment where we will grade you. The assignment is just to put into practice these ideas that you're learning um, to help cement them in our, in our minds. Um, and that way, when we get to the third assignment where we actually get to work with a venture, we hope a lot of these things are, are well established in how you're thinking and doing things. So I'll just put up on the uh, screen now, um, Clemmy, if you can take that slide down, I'll put up the slide, the homework slide. Let's see, share. Can everyone see that? Right, so this homework slide is- That's the uh, screen for now, Nicola. I don't know if anyone else can see it. Oh dear, it's come up as mine is share. Can anyone else see it? No, I'm come... quite loaded. Okay, I'll stop the share. Um, okay, I will read you, I'll try one more time. And if it doesn't work, um, I will read it out to you. Okay, assignment one. Any good now? No. Yeah, it's still just black. Yeah, I'm not sure why that's doing that. Okay, what I'll do then is I'll just talk Talk oh, us through it. You've got, got it. it. Come up. Yeah, we got it. Woo! Yay! That's good. It's always good to see it, isn't it? Rather than have it read to you. So, the assignment um, is you'll see there's a link in the assignment, um, and it takes you to a report by an organization called Eat My Lunch. Now, don't be alarmed. It says it's 16 pages, it's actually mostly fabulous photos and a few comments on each page. Right, we'd like you to look at that impact report and ask, answer the following questions. What do you think the problem is they are trying to solve? What activity do they do? What are the short-term ch changes for children, teachers, and parents? So those are the different partners. What changes in the long-term and for whom? Is there evidence of engagement with the partners? What do you think would happen if they didn't do anything? And briefly describe three other ways this problem could be approached. Um, any questions? Any questions on the homework assignment or any questions on the presentation? Have we scared anyone off? Will you be back for the seminar? Hopefully. 
all the feedback coming through the chat's been really positive. So I don't be put off by the silence. So we're now, just... Oh, thank you, Clemmie. Sorry, Nicola. Um, I know that you were doing this as well. I just put yeah, the slide thank, up. Thank you. Also, a heads up, we've talked about um, module three. So module two, Clemmie's talked through, and we'll go into a lot more detail on the theory of change. Um, I'll come and I see have a question I'll answer in just a moment. Clemmie, after I do this planning, the question for you is what do we mean by short term? Is it three months or six months and also long term? So somebody has been great and already looking yeah. at the assignment. So if you can answer that in just a moment. Okay. Um, there is a future homework assignment, which is going to be uh, the application of um, developing with a venture a theory of change. So what you've learned today and what you've learned predominantly in the next module. And if you can all start thinking about a venture that you will actually practice this on and book them in for 90 minutes or so between May the 1st and May the 9th. Because on May the 1st, we have our webinar on showing you how to actually apply it. And on the seminar is only eight days later. So between module three, webinar and seminar, we'd like you to have a chance to practice it before you come back to the seminar. So that's just a heads up. If you can start thinking about a venture and we'll remind you of this again at the end of module two. Clemmy, over to you for the question. I'll just oh. reiterate what Nicola said, I think it's really valuable to have a go at this and to have a go at a time when you can come back to a group of friends who you can say what went well, what didn't work, what you're gonna try next time. Um, so we really encourage you to be in a position to give it a go in that week. Um, so answering the question about short term, medium term and long term, I wish I had a really easy answer to that, but I don't. So the when we think about the change that an organization is going to have, it's useful if we can sort of think about the end point. What's the ultimate change that they would want to conceivably see happen as a consequence of their program? So we're not talking about, you know, saving the world, solving world hunger. We're thinking about like what's conceivable for this organization. So that's you've got on one end, you've got what is the activity. On the other end, you've got where might they eventually get to. And then basically you're going to divide the time up into three. So there's no hard and fast rule of what short term, medium term and long term looks like because for every organization it might, be, might look different. I think for this case study, for this example, for the homework, I think it's probably reasonable for you to think of the short term as um, the three month mark. Um, and then maybe you could go sort of six months in a year. Um, but that's just my thought. I won't, I won't um, limit you to that. You can make your own decision. Basically, it's just about this thing changes first and then this thing and then this thing to, to get to the ultimate impact. There's a lot of validity in this. Yeah, and we have one comment saying that in economics, short term is normally less than one year, medium term is one to three years and long term is over three years. And as you said, Clem, it really depends and there's no rigid rules about what you consider short, medium, and long term. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's great. Great that there is some economic theory behind it. I sort of err on the side of um, trying to be more flexible so that it works for more organizations. But I agree that there will be organizations out there that want more structure and more um, clarity around what the rules should be. So great if you can apply economic theory to that to help get that certainty that people are on the right track. Great, well, we're an hour in and we've sort of finished what we wanted to sort of present. Does anyone have any more questions or thoughts? Um, you'll see on the homework assignment that your email, you've got my email there to email me your results. If you're looking for a participant, um, feel free to reach out through uh, the Slack channel. Um, we had a, we ended up with 13 uh, participants uh, across many countries on today's call. So if you don't uh, have a participant from your own platform, um, please do reach out, a, a partner. Clemmie, any last thoughts or does anyone have any last questions? 
I'll just also comment that we've structured these sessions anticipating comments and leaving time for you to ask questions and for us to discuss um, your thoughts or challenges. So we expect that probably people will speak more, the more the more comfortable people get with this. And um, so one option would be for us to load up the session so it's 90 minutes full and without any questions, or the other option is to keep making space for comments and discussion. Probably we'll keep space for discussion, but um, if others would prefer that we put in more content, then, then we could do that as well. We're, we got, we'll be guided by you. Oh, yeah, thanks, Clemmy. And Will, I was just wondering um, if you could guide participants to where, um, how, if they don't already have access to the Slack channel. At the moment, it's on the Frontier Incubator's Slack channel in Impact for Ventures. Um, so if anyone doesn't have access to that now, um, Will is the person, Will, um, do you have any comments on uh, how to reach out to you to help ensure they've got access to that? So someone on your team should have access to the Slack channel. Um, but if you can email uh, hello at frontierincubators.org, which is the kind of central email address for the program, um, uh, specifying which theme you, uh, you are in and uh, we'll get you onto that uh, particular Slack channel uh, as, uh, as soon as we can. Well, can you just type that address into the box or I can? Hello at... I can do that. All good. Okay, that would be great. Thanks. So everyone can see it in front of them. And thank you, Rita, for your comment on leaving time for discussion. Um, and if anyone's having trouble with the Slack channel, feel free to email me. Um, I sent you all an email asking you to do the baseline survey and a huge thank you to those who have. If you haven't done it yet, I know we've already started, um, but it would be great to get the baseline um, done for all of you if, if possible. But you do have my email address, so feel free to email me if you have any concerns or questions. Reach out to me on the Slack channel um, and or reach out to Will if you're having trouble with the Slack channel. Right, I think at this point, um, we can consider that done. Thanks, Clemmy. Um, that was excellent. And thanks, everyone, for jumping on and staying on. Thanks, and everyone. Good luck with the homework. Yeah, good luck with the homework, for sure. Thanks, Bye. Everyone.